good morning everyone uh, first of all i should welcome you all because we are meeting after almost one year uh, for a purpose for this class okay so um, this is the uh, we will be uh, in this lecture series we will be talking about the things related to engineering hydrology uh, you have already studied two courses of water resources engineering uh, one is fluid mechanics and another is hydraulics and hydraulic machines this is the third course that you are studying and uh, as i'm thinking you will be able to uh, uh, you will be able to study two courses in 7th and 8th semester wre1 and wre2 uh, wre1 uh, will be consisting of uh, engineering hydrology portion and irrigation engineering and wre2 may be consisting of uh, flood modeling flood analysis and analysis and design of hydraulic structures so whatever you are studying in engineering hydrology there are chances that you will be able to study the same uh, um, portion in wre1 and wre2 but things may also be different because we don't know what is the syllabus of 7th sem and 8th sem uh, in your batch we are following the syllabus from aktu okay so now we start with uh, this lecture on engineering hydrology i just write over here uh someone else is writing i think uh you don't need to write anything uh Uh, engineering hydrology uh you are already familiar with engineering because you are in the process of being an engineer uh, hydro means you know water and you are also familiar with this term logy so uh in hydrology it is also called the science of water uh, in hydrology we study about the water we all know the importance of uh water okay so whatever uh, resources are available to us uh, if you look at uh, we were also talking in the previous section if you look at spatial and temporal distribution of water spatial and temporal distribution of water spatial means uh, how the things are varying with respect to space and temporal means how the things are varying with respect to time so you will also be uh, having the idea about that because things are uh, different in the particular time you might be having different things uh, someone else is doing something with this is it uh, i think white word is there but it is not in my control uh so i have to do something with this because you don't need to again i'm having another white board you will be able to view only you don't need to do anything on the blackboard or in the whiteboard uh, 
uh, now you will be able to see this whiteboard but you can't do anything in this okay so we were talking about the spatial and temporal distribution of butter so you will be having some idea like that uh, things are different uh, in different part of the country in different part of the world in the same month uh, in, in the same month you are having uh, different scenario in uh, up in, and different scenario in west bengal uh, related to the water uh, resources similarly if you look at the temporal distribution in the same uh, state you will be having uh, different conditions in the month of february and different conditions in the month of july so uh, what actually happens at the some uh, uh, what actually happens in some place you will be getting uh, the area is getting flooded and or there is abundance of water in some area there is a scarcity of the water so whatever resources are available to us we have to use them optimally and for that it is necessary that whatever resources are available to us uh, we have to use uh, them optimally but for that we must know how and in what forms butter is available to us okay for that we discuss about uh can you see uh, this white board because only three people are showing they are able to show or they are showing yes sir they, uh, okay so how in in what forms butter is available to us for that we will be discussing about the hydrologic cycle some of you or many of you will be familiar with this hydro hydrologic cycle but we need to start with this uh how we can remove this or this can oh, this is rotating if i draw the things over here suppose this is the ground surface okay uh i make it some hilly areas is there or some river uh this are the ocean like that some lakes are there there are so many structures over here uh plants vegetations trees so many things are there so what actually happened there are there is huge amount of butter is available on the earth surface uh we simply so th this is ocean i don't need to write this is ocean this is river this is plant this is building this is hilly area uh, butter is also available in the hilly areas mountains in the form of ice so butter is available on the earth surface so we call it simply surface butter okay huge amount of butter is also available in the atmosphere so in the form of butter vapors mass of butter vapor is there humidity is there so we call it atmos atmospheric butter it is in the form of clouds and after condensation the precipitation occurs similarly there is huge amount of butter is available in below the ground surface so we call it ground butter as a whole you can classify in three whether it is surface butter atmospheric butter or and ground butter there is also, so this is the distribution and occurrence of butter and there is also circulation of this water okay how do we define the the um, this course engineering hydrology or what you have to study in engineering hydrology we simply call engineering hydrology is the science of water it deals with occurrence distribution and uh, circulation of water in the universe okay so whatever surface water resources are there there is evaporation of 
butter from this surface butter resources from the rivers from the oceans so after evaporation this is uh, going into the atmosphere uh, in the form of humidity in the form of mass of butter vapor and after formation of the clouds there is condensation and precipitation occurs okay so there is precipitation uh there are various forms of precipitation uh you can go through that uh, whether it is rainfall or it is a snowfall glaze sleet hail so so many things are there so you can go through that so there are different forms so these are the forms of pre precipitation but when we are talking about uh, in the context of our country uh, it is mainly we are talking about the rainfall okay so, so later on when we will be using the term precipitation it is especially for rainfall in indian context in western countries other forms will also be there okay so whatever amount of precipitation occurs some portion of that is evaporated back into the sky and remaining reaches on the earth surface and whatever amount of precipitation or rainfall reaches on the earth some portion of that some part of that is in, uh, is trapped by the buildings structures trees plants so that is trapped by the uh, bodies that is called interception okay so interception is the part of precipitation that is basically trapped by the structures or vegetations another term is also used that is called dead storage uh, you will also see some part of precipitation is used in filling small pits ponds like that so that is basically called the dead storage so if butter is uh, the part of precipitation is going into the pits and uh, ponds in filling those so this this is called dead storage okay some part of that precipitation infiltrates or goes into the ground that is called infiltration so i should write here this is called infiltration okay and the remaining part of precipitation should flow as a surface flow or overland flow and it will be meeting the nearby rivers and rivers rivers finally meeting the ocean and after ocean or from the ocean there is uh, evaporation so in this way this cycle continues so that's why it is a uh, cycle if you look at the things below the ground then few uh, depth below uh, you can um, uh, drawing this is the water table okay below the ground this is water table you will get a uh, few meters below uh, 3 meter 4 meter 5 meter 10 meter like that it will depend on the area so this is this is the water table below this water table uh, is there any problem okay so below this water table uh, all the soil is saturated uh, you are also studying geotechnical engineering so you will be better knowing what is the meaning of saturated zone here because if you look at the uh, soil sample over here if soil particles are there there is whites between the soil particles okay so if these whites are completely filled with the water you will say this is saturated otherwise you will be this zone will be called as unsaturated zone 
are unsaturated or we also call cross zone okay this is unsaturated this is saturated if you go few kilometers below 2 kilo kilometer 3 kilometer 4 kilometer below uh, you will get some impermeable strata over here okay this is impermeable uh, you might be knowing uh, two different terms i write here one is called porosity and permeability you will also be familiar with these two term okay porosity it tells about suppose this is the soil sample so how many pores are available how many soil uh, whites are or how much wide space is available that will tell you about the like, how easily water can flow through the, these soil pores or how easy is the flow through porous media so that will be telling about the uh, so that is basically called the permeability so if you go few kilometers below you will get impermeable and impervious when i am using this term i am so it is the permeability is uh, it is almost non permeable or it is also non porous so impervious and impermeable layer rocks are there we cannot penetrate this uh, it is not easy to penetrate these layers these impermeable layer so generally when we are pumping out the water we are pumping out the water from this zone okay this formation is there below the water table we go few meters below like 50 meters below 100 meters below 200 meters below 300 meters below like that for pumping out the ground water so we are pumping out the ground water so this is the basically called the ground water if you look at the things above the water table you can classify this zone in you, you can divide this zone in three parts just above the water table this is called capillary zone okay capillary zone so or uh, you will be familiar with this term capillarity when you study the process of uh, process of surface tension or about the adhesive and cohesive properties of water you know better what is the this capillary zone so you will get the practical application of that capillary tube uh, in capillary tube there is rise or fall in the water so actually above this water table soil samples are there and whatever these uh, whites are there or this porous media is there it forms a tube and its diameter is also very small in case of clay soil when uh, very fine particles are there this dia is very very small in sand in sandy soil uh, this diameter will be uh, more but in case of clay soil or silt the diameter is very small so there is very um there is rise in the water in up to some height so we can also consider above this water table up to few meters or up to few centimeters uh, above so that will also depend on the uh, soil to soil in case of uh, clay soil you will get a um, 1 meter 2 meter height of this capillary zone in case of sandy soil you will get few centimeters <laughs> but when we are uh, working in this field generally this portion is neglected uh, capillary zone um, because this is, height is not very of very much interest but we need to understand there is up, above this water table there is some portion that is completely saturated that comes in the category of ca capillary zone okay above this capillary zone or or just below the uh, i'm not saying above this capillary zone i'm saying uh, just below the ground surface this zone is called soil water zone i i should make uh, here this is soil water zone. okay this is called soil water zone so plants are taking water from this zone 
just below the soil surface in the ground surface uh, plants are plant roots are taking water from this zone so when you are working in the field of irrigation engineering then you will be interested in knowing how much water is available in this soil water zone and in the uh, middle of this soil water zone and capillary zone there is some intermediate zone okay again uh, when things are changing from one zone to another zone things are transient or things are intermediate so just um, in the middle we have some intermediate zone up to some depth we have this soil water zone so uh, plants or trees are taking water from this soil water zone okay through their roots and through uh, its trunk it is uh, they are forming their food and it is reaching to their uh, leaves and finally from the leaves this water is evaporated into the atmosphere this process is called transpiration so you can have two different uh, things here one is called evaporation evaporation uh, one thing is Uh, you can see in the evaporation uh, one thing will happen when it is surface water resources then uh, from the surface it is if water falls over the tree and it is getting evaporated this comes in the category of evaporation if plants are taking water from this soil water zone and through its trunk it is reaching to the leaves and when it is evaporated it comes in the process of transpiration generally it is not easy to uh, say what amount of water is getting transpired transpired or whatever amount is water is evaporated so we study a combined process that is called uh, evapor transpiration or this is also called the another consumptive use another term is also used uh, consumptive use okay so another process another component of this hydrologic cycle is transpiration and evaporation we call it evapor transpiration or consumptive use now we see the things uh, uh, when water is getting infiltrated or water goes into the sky some amount of water can go deeper and join this water table and there will be rise in the water table okay when water is going into the ground it is uh, used as a rising in the water table but some amount of water that is going into the ground uh, it flows as a sub surface flow um, this is ground uh, water and this is also called sub surface water i just right here if you are saying this uh, for this unsaturated zone this is also called sub surface water so there is sub surface flow and it is joining the nearby rivers or um, the nearby lakes okay sub surface flow is there so this was all about the hydrologic cycle now i also so here uh, are you able to see this uh, microsoft docu um, by document uh, can you reply for this uh, are you able to see this ms office document no sir no so how you will be able to see this uh, now you will be able to see is it uh, are you will so if i say components of hydrologic cycle Okay. one thing you can say it is precipitation this is the main component another component you can say 
interception another is dead storage uh, this second and third also comes in the category of initial losses okay that we will see later on dead storage and another uh, it is infiltration next it could be evapotranspiration okay these are the components and the most important thing another is runoff runoff is nothing but whatever amount of water is reaching to the river so that is basically called or you can simply say it is discharge okay so in hydrologic cycle we also define one process that is called rainfall runoff process rainfall runoff process so these are the components so if on a catchment area what is this catchment area i also explain you uh, suppose i have to remove all this what i should do uh, this is circle uh, where is eraser is the uh, this is eraser so it is not easy to it is able to erase only how i can erase this okay i have got another is it no no okay Uh, there should be something uh, in one point we will be uh, because it is taking time it will be taking time is it control a okay so what we were discussing how oh, okay uh, if uh, we look at a catchment area what is this catchment area i just make like this so this is catchment area uh, how do we define catchment area or you can also call river basin whenever you will be defining the catchment area or river basin basin so this this will that will be defined for uh, some particular river uh, if in any any area rainfall occurs so to which river it is contributing uh, if water falls over any point in this area it will be contributing to this particular river so this area will be considered as a catchment area of this river okay Uh, uh in our country you also have uh, so many major rivers are there like the river ganga uh, brahmaputra godavari krishna kaveri mahanadi tapti so these are the major rivers and there are also so many tributaries of the river tributaries means they are the you can say helping rivers so, uh, just like gomti nadi gomti river is the tributary of the river ganga yamuna is the tributary of uh, river ganga so these are the tributaries and there will be some major rivers if amount of rainfall uh, is there the rainfall is over this much of area it will be contributing if 
the uh, if the rainfall is outside this catchment area it will be contributing to another river so that will be that will come in the river basin basin of that river so um, the river basin the basin of any every river is defined you will also be having a clear basin of uh, river gomti and river ganga like that so how much rainfall is occurring over here and from this rainfall how much is suppose there is some discharge station or runoff station over this point so from this much of rainfall which is falling over this land how much is converted or how much is reaching to the river or how much is increasing uh, responsible for increasing discharge in the uh, river so and th this is also a process and which is basically called the rainfall runoff process you can say in this if i denote uh, rainfall uh, for rainfall i say p p is because of precipitation i call this is the symbol for and finally runoff is you can say q because discharge is there so i am showing q is the symbol for discharge so this is q how much amount of this p is uh, going to increase the q value so if i uh, subtract the losses so whatever are these things you can say if rainfall runoff process is there so precipitation is there this is as a input the catchment area interception dead storage infiltration evapotranspiration these are these comes in the category of losses and finally how much output from the catchment area runoff is there okay now we will see all these things one by one we will be going in the detail of that we will see the mechanism or the, the physical phenomena of every process and how we can measure the data related to day and how we can uh, analyze the data we will be looking for that okay so just to start with the precipitation we are now starting with this precipitation uh, i think there should be something easy thing for deleting this because it is uh okay so we are discussing about the precipitation uh you can go through the various forms of the precipitation we don't need to discuss in the class uh, what are the specifications for a snow rainfall or mainly in india it is rainfall so we are talking about the rainfall first thing that we discuss about the mechanism of rain how the rain takes place although you have studied in your earlier classes or when you will be studying in the schools uh, mechanism of rain okay what is the mechanism of rainfall uh, i think everyone knows but we will be discussing there are different you can also say different types of rainfall i can also write here types of rainfall okay so first type you can say uh it is frontal rainfall another you can say convective the third one you can have uh orographic rainfall and fourth one is cyclonic if you look at uh the basic mechanism uh, more or less you will get the same idea uh, but actually happens uh, 
water uh, surface water resources are there there is the evaporation of that and there is the formation of water vapor so huge amount of mass of water vapors is available on the atmosphere and uh, when this air mass is rising up in that rising up the cooling of that air mass takes place and after condensation the precipitation occurs or rainfall occurs what happens in frontal rainfall uh, first you understand what is the meaning of this front if you have two different air masses uh, this is i should not close this uh, suppose this is one air mass and this is another air mass uh, different air mass means their temperature and pressure will be different so when temperature and pressure is different density will be different because in air mass or in the gases you know the formula pv is equal to nrt so they will be having different density this is suppose warm air mass and this is suppose cold air mass uh, so actually we are missing the chalk or whiteboard marker because it is not easy to write okay uh, front means you can say the contact surface of two different air masses so you can say this is a clear front so when uh, this warm air mass is blowing like this or it is coming from this direction it due to its lighter density it rises up over the cold air mass it is rising up and when it is reaching into the atmosphere it the cooling of that in the process of rising the cooling occurs and after condensation the precipitation occurs that comes in the category of frontal rainfall what actually happens uh, in uh, convective rainfall okay uh, what actually happens okay it will be working uh, convective rainfall uh, you all uh, you also know the process of convection actually in the summer season the temperature of earth surface is very high so the air mass that is in the contact of the air surface or earth surface uh, it is also sometimes the temperature is 42 degree 45 degree uh, like like that so the air mass that is in the contact of the earth surface it is having very high temperature and li very light density so due to uh, low density or light density because it is lighter it rises up and in the process of that rising up it is cooling down and there is the formation of convective currents uh, in this region and that causes the condensation and after condensation the precipitation occurs next is orographic precipitation this generally occurs in hilly areas okay so when where mountains are there suppose this is the mountain so when uh, this suppose this is the air mass so this is blowing like this so due to this ground elevation it rises up this is the air mass blowing like this and uh, due to its uh this ground water sorry ground elevation is like this so in the process of that it rises up and causes the rainfall orographic next is cyclonic precipitation it generally occurs in the coastal areas uh, near the sea coastal areas okay near the sea uh, first you should know what are these cyclones you can also define these cyclones uh, i write here cyclones are the waves of very high magnitude magni huh? magnitude tubes and rotating about the center okay uh, you will be having the waves something like like this uh, very high magnitude waves these types of waves are coming from the ocean 
they are carrying a huge amount of water and when they are coming over the plain region in the coastal areas they are causing the rainfall and huge amount of cyclonic rainfall may be there so most of the time we also hear it causes the floods okay near the reason near in the coastal areas so this was about the mechanism of rainfall next thing is uh, no the next thing is no uh, i should no this is there how, how to measure rainfall data i should write here the measurement of measurement of rainfall data okay so how we can measure the rainfall data for that we install our device that is used for measuring the rainfall data is called rain gauge okay we use the rain gauges for that you will be having two different types of rain gauges one is called non recording type right and another is recording type non recording type and non recording type so basically in non as the name suggests non recording type uh, you will be operating it manually so so basically wherever it is installed one person goes uh, to the rain gauge station that is called rain gauge station so goes to the rain gauge and see how much uh, amount of rainfall is there in one day so generally um, in india people go at 8 am and see in 24 hours um, how much rainfall has been collected there and based on that they will be having the daily rainfall data and we can also have the monthly rainfall data hourly rainfall data in recording type the things are recorded generally two types of recording uh, type are used one is called tipping bucket and weighing bucket bucket type okay uh, you can go in the detail of that Uh, and also there are also guidelines if uh, any catchment area is there in that catchment area where these rain gauges should be installed in our institute can it also we have one rain gauge station initially it was above the when i was studying here it was above the edwin block but now it is near the can it ground you can see that so that is basically non recording type in Uh, 24 hours, a uh, a person takes the reading, so it will be giving uh, the daily rainfall data. But if you want hourly, you can also see the reading after one hour. So um, you will get, you can go to the site of IMD, Indian Meteorological Department. You can get the data, rainfall data from there. Okay. next question is there in any catchment area in how many kilometer square area uh, how many rain gauges should be installed so you can go through the book or you can go the is specifications for that ki where uh, generally in plain areas uh, the variation in rainfall is not very large but in hilly areas this uh, variation in rainfall is very high Uh, if you go few kilometers below you can have different pattern of the rainfall so so based on the area in hilly in hilly areas in few kilometer square area you will be having five uh, uh, in 100 kilometer square area you will be having five six or you can go in the detail of that and also there are few guidelines for where it should be installed if um, whatever amount of rainfall is occurring it should not be interrupted right the main thing is that it should not be interrupted next thing is okay you can go through all this i'm not discussing
how to represent the rainfall data okay i write here how to represent rainfall data okay so when over a catchment area due to a we can represent it uh, so generally it is represented in the form of okay i should make first thing uh, we show we represent it by using heatograph another is by using masker okay how we can represent or how they look like i just show here uh, in the excel sheet uh, are you able to see this excel sheet uh, can you reply for this uh, whatever i am speaking are you able to hear uh, can you reply for that yes sir okay uh, can you see this ms excel sheet is it uh, please reply for this uh, excel sheet dekh sakte hain uh, are you seeing this excel sheet no sir no okay so what should be why it is no Uh, can you see this um, MS Word sheet? MS Word yes, sheet, yes, huh? Yes. Okay, MS Excel sheet. We can see. Why it is not? I think the reason may be. i think you should be able to see because whatever things are there are you familiar with this ms excel sheet or not uh, this is ms excel sheet a new microsoft excel worksheet can you see this uh, can Hello, you sir, see ms word ms word is yes sir ms excel sheet can you see this yes sir okay very good okay so due to a storm suppose a 10 hour storm is there i just write here yeah my so a 10 hour storm storm means uh, you can say a storm is there uh due to one storm suppose rainfall is occurring for 10 hours so you will say this uh, 10 hour uh, storm is there and due to that how there is the rainfall pattern and i am just writing here this is time and this is okay when you plot this a uh, heatograph heatograph are basically if i show here uh, they will be looking like oh, on the x axis you plot rainfall intensity so it will be uh, basically in millimeter or centimeter per hour per day so that so that is something like right? millimeter per hour you can say okay uh, and this is time time so this is per hour so this will be here it, it will be uh, hour so 
this is our and this plot will be something like uh, you will be having this this uh, these bars will be there so this type of pattern you will be having in rainfall intensity okay rainfall this is rainfall intensity versus hour one is rainfall depth another is rainfall intensity intensity means what is the uh, how um, in uh, what is uh, in, uh, you will be knowing better what is this intensity okay what is the rate of uh, rainfall occurring this is time and i am writing here intensity so this is in mm and mm per sorry per hour and this is time in hour okay so if i start this is zero this is two hours this is four hours this is six hour this is eight hour this is 10 hour so you have due to this 10 hour is term uh, initially at time zero there is no water so when you will see uh, in this time in zero to two hours it is supposed three mm per hour three millimeter per hour, per hour this is the intensity and then it is five this is suppose seven or i just write six or now it is four and after that it is one like that okay so if you have to plot this i just write here and go to the plot insert uh, columns will be there sorry this is bar chart two divas are there why it is showing like that? I don't need to write this thing. Uh, if I show it, No. So if you plot this thing, uh, we can very easily plot in MATLAB, but I'm thinking uh, this is Why it is showing in this direction? Hmm. Uh, it is showing like this, but uh, as I'm thinking, suppose I have, sir. Huh? Huh? What are you saying? MS Word is being shown on a screen, not MS Excel document. MS Excel is not shown.
is it visible now uh, can you see yes sir yes sir yes, it is visible now so when you have this uh, type of data in uh, in first second hour this is the intensity in second to fourth hour this is the intensity so you can plot like this i was trying to plot why it is not coming it should simply come no. These two different series are there. Actually, so what I was trying to say, uh, this rainfall intensity versus hour. Suppose this is two, four, uh, this is zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. So you will be showing the intensity over here. Then it is, then it is like that. So this type of um, rainfall intensity versus time plot you will be having. These are called the heatographs. Uh, this mass curve, what is this mass curve? Uh, this is basically, you can say, accumulated uh, depth. So you will be saying the rainfall depth. It will be in millimeter versus time graph. Okay. So in the first two hours, this much of intensity is there, and then uh, you will be getting later on. This is the intensity. So how you can get the accumulated depth from there? Like Q. Depth. I can write here in millimeter. So you can simply say in zeroth hour uh, it will be zero. In second hour three, this is the intensity, but this is in two hours, so this is per hour basis. So you can say this is this will be six value here, and I think you will be getting this thing. Okay. In uh, up to the end of this fourth hour, so this much of intensity is there. So in these two hours, uh, this much of the intensity is there. So five into two, or it will be better if I write here uh, first one, two, three. You will get better because you, or I should write the same thing. And there is no problem. You can understand very easily. So this is six mm over here, and this is ten. So this will be sixteen, and then. You will be having this is 16. This is uh, so this will be 28 mm, and this is 28, and this is this will be 36, and this is 2, and this will be 38. So you will say up to the end of this 10 hour, and this much of rainfall will be occurring. Okay, if you plot this thing, so this will be always rising. Uh, 0, 6, 16, 28, 36, 38. If I uh, draw this thing, so you will have this type of masker. This is basically called the masker. Why it is fluctuating? I don't know. If this is thing is there, if you are plotting this thing, so you will be getting uh, initially this was the, the thing. It was uh, maximum in somewhere middle and then, then it was falling down.
okay so in this way you can so these two ways in these two ways and further you are presenting in the form of heatographs or or in the form of i think heatograph you will be heatograph no it is this is the correct spelling i think you may check this thing or this is the mass curve accumulated depth versus time plot so mass curve will be something like like this okay next thing how to analyze the data next thing is about the rainfall data how you can uh rainfall data analysis why simply write data analysis what actually happens whatever data you are having uh so when you have to use for any purpose when you are designing anything suppose you are doing the uh, project of rainfall forecasting so it will be based on the whatever analysis you will be doing it will be on the basis of past year records and it is also desirable whenever you are uh, designing any project or you for that you and you are analyzing the things so generally people use at least 30 years of records should be there so it is also considered as uh, Uh, we can use uh, that much of record because we can't um, we can't uh, take any decision for a very small amount of data if you have only for 5 year 10 year we can not conclude the things but in 30 in in 30 years of span so at least 30 years of data should be there okay again when rainfall data when you you will be working on the rainfall data this uh, what are the different types of rainfall data you can have uh, hourly rainfall data so generally uh, for some purposes this will be used for daily rainfall data this will be used for most of the purposes suppose in many times you also see the forecasting of the rainfall data whether tomorrow the rainfall will occur or not or after 10 days rainfall will be occurring or not like that so it is based on the past year records people analyze the things based on the past year records so then uh, daily rainfall data another you may have monthly rainfall data and you may also have you may also be working annual rainfall data okay so what may be the problem the data that you are using two problems you need to check the first problem is called to estimate missing rainfall data okay uh it may be possibility suppose you have the uh data from the year of 1990 to 2019 this this 30 years records so it may be possible uh, for some particular day or in some particular year you are not having the rainfall uh, data so, uh, for some particular day it may happen because um one person who was responsible for taking the reading he has not gone to the station and couldn't uh, collect the rainfall data so for some particular day the rainfall data may be missing the problem may be like this uh, at some time sometimes you will also see uh, at some particular station uh, the rain gauge rain gauge station was missing for some particular year or few months so how we will estimate that missing rainfall data so this is the problem okay how to estimate the missing rainfall data whatever data you have whether it is consistent or not to check the consistency of rainfall data okay 
check the consist so, so whenever we we are using any ren file data we need to check these two things if anything is not missing it's very good if there is missing data you need to fill that data what should be the uh, the best value for that okay or another thing to check the consistency of ren file data so that we will be discussing now you first uh, discuss about the how to estimate the missing ren file data okay how to estimate the missing ren file data ren file data suppose again this is the catchment area and in this catchment area you have a uh, total m plus 1 Uh, uh, total m plus is, is stations are there three four five six whatever stations are there and suppose we have m plus one stations there okay uh, these are m stations and this is suppose x station x okay on this station x this is station x the rainfall value is missing for some particular day. okay suppose it is missing for ah uh, it is missing you have at at sorry at rainfall station ah uh, area at station rain gauge station i should write ah uh, at station x uh when uh, fall value when fall data is missing for 14th february 2015 okay whatever data you are having it is missing for 14 february uh, so the reason may be anything the person who has to uh, take the reading he has not gone to the uh, rengage station so that's why it is missing so what you will do in that condition you will see on other stations what is the value on the same day on 14th february 2015 so what is the value there and you can simply take the averaging of that i can simply write here the formula uh, uh formula i can write over here because it is easy to write in ms word okay i can simply write uh, this is p x at station x what is the value you can simply say it should be uh, first i should write this thing and this is sorry or i can also write this pi and i is equal to 12 m divided by n you can take a simple averaging and based on that you can find out the value at the missing so this is very simple so when uh, generally in plain areas you can use this formula but in hilly areas it is not good because you will get wide variance in the when you have very wide variation in the value of rainfall data from one station to another station then it is not good to use this thing then people go for normal rainfall value how this normal rainfall value is calculated suppose you are working on the daily rainfall data means the value was missing for some particular day okay so this is calculated is calculated based on 30 years average okay so what you will be doing for that particular day of 14th february you will be looking for for that some particular day um, of 14th february you will be looking for 30 years of record and you will take the average of that that will give you the normal rainfall value for 
any station okay okay so suppose this value nx is for nx this value is for rainfall station x n1 is for uh, station 1 Station two, three, four, m stations were there. So n one, n two, n three, m, m, n m values will be there. So they are the normal rainfall value. Now you will check the variation between these two. Suppose uh, how you can check the variation. I can simply write. I can simply write. Suppose this is n x minus and suppose first station is there divided by nx okay uh, you will take this thing and multiplied by 100 so you will get the percentage if this range is within 10 percent uh, if variation is within 10 percent you will go for simply this averaging but if this is not uh, the thing, if it is more than 10%, even you have four or five stations, um, for any station, if it is um, the variation is more than 10%, you will be going for um, this formula. I write another formula here. Uh, I will be using here Px divided by Nx and in place of this, you will be using. Sorry. Pi divided by Ni. So this you will be using this formula means you will be consider for this normal precipitation. Okay. When you also need to take care of uh, this normal place when you are having the value of normal rainfall. So when you are working on daily rainfall data you find out by using the daily rainfall data sometimes it may also have in happen that uh, the rainfall value is missing for complete one year then you need to work on uh, the annual data and you will be finding out the 30 years of record and looking for the annual averaging not daily rainfall data averaging when it is missing for some particular day you will be going for that some particular day if for particular year of one year is there, then go for the, the normal rainfall value will be obtained based on the annual averaging, not uh, that particular day averaging. Okay. Uh, we can also solve one problem over here. Suppose uh, we have four stations uh, this is station x this is station one this is station two this is station three sorry can you see this uh, excel sheet okay you are not speaking anything so at yes at, we can see okay uh, at station x uh, this value is missing so you are not having any value here so you need to find out at the same time you see sorry i this is missing okay uh, at a station one suppose this value is uh, i'm writing arbitrary thing here suppose this is uh, here i'm writing for annual average annual thing suppose this is uh, for the year 2015 uh, this station X was inoperative, so so you have to find out the missing value of this annual data. So here this is suppose when you are writing this uh, rainfall value, so when you are measuring through any instrument, this is in centimeter, okay. Uh, so you can go up to millimeter and in some instruments you can also go up to the Bernier reading or up to second place of the decimal but here I'm writing this is in millimeters so you can say 705 millimeter or 70.5 centimeter and at this station suppose this is 62 
0.9 and suppose this is uh, 74.8 uh, this type of value is there so you can simply take the averaging of that and fill the missing data but you need to check uh, uh, first whether the values of normal rainfall are within this range within 10% uh, or not so suppose uh, when we have the nx values suppose n x values or n ki jo value hai at station x suppose this is uh, 80.3 at station 1 this is 69.5 and at station 2 it is 74.6 it is 63.8 it like that whatever values are there so you can just take uh, i can go here i have to write whether it is within 10 percent or not this minus this i can take the bracket over here divided by this value so this is uh, coming out like 13.45 so you can also check other values otherwise at least one value is there you will be going for the formula uh, you will be going for uh, this formula okay so when you are finding out this form by using this formula so yeah, i think you can calculate so we don't need to discuss that uh, next thing is How to check the consistency of rainfall data? Okay, next thing is, I think you all know what is the meaning of consistency. If you look at the rainfall data, if the if you look at the rainfall data, and the rainfall pattern is following some trend for a number of years, then you will be saying it is consistent. Okay, so again, when you will be checking the consistency of rainfall data again you will be checking with the nearby stations okay so what is actually happening in the nearby stations you will be checking based on that okay uh, so how um, do we check that for that we plot a double mask curve okay you had seen one mask uh, mask curve but this is called double mask curve so in that what we do uh, accumulated depth accumulated depth okay so that will be in millimeter or cell generally uh, we look at look for the annual data so you will be considering centimeter at nearby stations. Suppose you have five or 10 or 15 nearby stations. So you will be considering all stations, nearby station, near stations. Okay. On Y axis, you plot this thing. And on X axis, you plot accumulated. Whenever you will be having mass curve, you will be plotting uh, accumulated depth. Depth uh, in centimeter at station X. You, you have to check. You have to check uh, the consistency of station X. Okay, how we will be uh, plotting this? Suppose uh, at the nearby stations, you have. Uh, the values we will be starting from here from the latest year uh, suppose uh, you have the year 20 to 2019 so again this is accumulated depth so 2020 in 2019 may uh, you will be putting the value of 2020 plus 2019 value okay so you will get if the things are consistent then you will get some plot like that uh for number of years for 30 years of record 40 years of record whatever is there you will get some state line with minor variation
Okay. Uh, this is a straight line. This is it's not easy to make a straight line. Okay. What is this? Uh, this is a straight line. Okay, very good. Okay, so this is a straight line. When you are plotting this thing for different year, now you will be plotting this. So again, for this station also, uh, you will getting you will be getting a straight line with minor variation. You will be there because this is natural process. Uh, this is not artificial thing. Rainfall is there. Rainfall you are working on the rainfall data. So you will be getting the, again the straight line. But in if in some year. Uh, Mm, the rain gauge, rain gauge may be shifted or there is a very high, very large change in the characteristics of the catchment area. Suppose it was a very huge vegetation, but now it has been removed. So these types of things may occur. In that condition, you will get clear deviation from there. So when you have to use this data, uh, you need to correct it. And for correcting that, I, what I will be doing, uh, suppose this is the initially this was the slope of the line and this is so now if i have to use the data of the station x i will be making it, it on the same line so suppose this value is c uh, corrected value this is c so whatever is the this value i will multiply by this c and divide by a a is the actual value this is a okay um, this distance is a and this distance is C. So whatever P corrected will be there at station X will be equal to P X multiplied by C divided by A. Okay. So in this way, you will get the uh, corrected value. So you need to correctify. Now it will be consistent. Um, so if you are using this data, because now the things has been changed. So why I should work on uh, that old pattern? So in that situation, you need to correctify. Then you can use. So you first you will be making the data consistent, and after that you will be using. Two or three things are remaining uh, again for uh, this relative to this precipitation. I think that we should discuss in the next class. Uh, we had to start from uh, the ten. Uh, AM, but uh, we had started later on. So I think uh, should be stop here now. Uh, next thing that we will discuss in the uh, next class. And uh, can you come again? Uh, can you on your video? Can you make your uh, video on? Video and audio on? Yes, sir. How I can see all of you? I'm not able to see you. Okay. Okay, all of you are there. Were we corrected well or uh, uh, were you able to see the things or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, should, we, uh, should we go like this or for the yes, other sir. classes? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we will decide again the time for that and uh, we will be meeting for second lecture. And I think 10 or 12 lectures we will be able to discuss all the things, this whole syllabus. So in 10 or 15 days we will be able to study the whole syllabus okay so can we stop now okay thank yes, you sir. thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.